Today, we're going to be looking at the new model from ChatGPT, which is the latest and greatest, newest and most advanced model, GPT 4.0. So as you can see right here, this is available inside ChatGPT. The announcement was made just yesterday, and we're going to check out some of the latest functionalities. Now, one of the most interesting things I've seen about this, and I'll show you in a second, is how much more human this actually feels. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up ChatGPT, 3.5 versus 4 and I'll show you exactly what I mean now this update is actually free to everyone so it's not just available for premium subscribers anyone watching this can access it and the interesting thing about that I think is that potentially they're going to be releasing a search engine obviously they want more users on the platform inside ChatGPT to actually make it worthwhile it's an interesting theory it makes total sense they're trying to get more people on to ChatGPT and you can basically use ChatGPT4, which I'll show you in a second, completely free. So let me show you an example. So if we say inside ChatGPT, who is Julian Goldie? You can see right here, obviously knows who I am and that sort of thing, but the text right here isn't very engaging, isn't very interesting. And if we actually plug that into ChatGPT4, oh, as you can see, the actual content itself is a lot better formatted, it's more interesting, it's more engaging, it's easier to read, it feels a lot more human, right? So let me pull up the window side by side and I'll show you exactly what I mean. So as you can see right here, the text is pretty boring, pretty average, etc. And you can see with GPT-4.0, it's just a lot more formatted, it's a lot better. I think that's much better for content writing and it just seems way more engaging. Now I could actually use that inside of an article. Now, some people watching this will be like, well, why are you not comparing it to GPT-4? The thing is, GPT-4 is not actually free, but we can pull up GPT-4 and just compare the two models side by side. So if I start a new chat right here, and we'll start a new chat right here. This is the GPT-4 window, as you can see. This is the GPT-4.0 window, as you can see, right? And what I'm going to do is I'll compare the outputs side by side. So if we put who is Julian Goldie here and here, and we'll compare them right so let's go start the race and what you can actually see is that gpt 40 is way quicker to type out whereas this one is still going right additionally what you can see is that the formatting is just much nicer with 40 and inside gpt4 it's just like one big long paragraph see the actual content inside gpt40 feels more human it's easier to read it's formatted better it actually comes out at a faster output. Pretty crazy right there. I don't even know why I'm still paying for ChatGPT at this point. Absolutely crazy to see that. Now let's, now let's do some other crazy stuff, right? So I'm going to get my phone out right here. As you can see, we're pulling up the app. And what you can actually do, you won't be able to see this, but what we can actually do is have a conversation directly with GPT-4.0. Now the difference is that when you're using GPT-4.0, you can actually interrupt it and have a genuine conversation with it, right? So we're going to start this conversation right now. Uh, if you're ever feeling lonely, it's been a hard day with SEO, you, your traffic isn't going up in the way you wanted. At least you got chat GPT to keep you company, right? Unless you're in the SEO boardroom, of course, and then we can all talk as a community. But what we're going to do from here is I'm going to click on the conversation section. We're going to connect with ChatGPT. It's just loading up right now. And now I'm going to start speaking and say, hello, ChatGPT. Can you give me some advice on SEO? It's going to load. Not very good. I did actually test it earlier and had a full conversation. It was pretty impressive. But that, my friends, was a total waste of time. But at least you see the technical difficulties. But basically, I did test it before, and what you could do is go back and forth with ChatGPT. You could ask it a bunch of questions. If you didn't like what it was coming back to you with on the voice, and the voice sounded quite human in itself, then you could interrupt it just like you would in a normal conversation. Pretty crazy right there. Now, let's go deeper into the update and exactly what this means step by step. So this is the spring update announcement from GPTO, so you can see. And they basically said that they're making more capabilities available for free inside ChatGPT. And then we can click on learn more and it will show us exactly what we mean. You can see this demo right here where they're showing a live conversation, which is pretty interesting. And they actually live stream that. Now, the interesting thing about that is if you looked at Google's release when they released Gemini, they basically showed a bunch of features that you actually couldn't access with Gemini. And they kind of made it look like it was actually happening in real time. I think what ChatGPT have done is they've tried to come back to that in their own little way. And also bear in mind, like, Google have another event coming out today, 
And so they've tried to overshadow the whole release from Google in terms of what's going to be released. So you can see Google IO 2024, what to expect. That is happening today. You can check out the times right here. This is available on Mashable.com. And probably one of the biggest features that we can see across all of these, whether it's app, is AI being inserted directly on, into phones. Now, this is interesting because obviously a lot of people do searches via their phones, but if they start using AI, then that might wipe out a lot of search traffic and potentially a lot of clicks from AI. So you can see, for example, Apple is finalizing a deal with OpenAI to power some generative experiences, and then Google will integrate Gemini into their smartphones. So it's a bit of a race right there. That's going to be quite interesting. What OpenAI have actually said about the latest update is that they're moving towards more natural human computer interaction, right? So basically you can use a combination of text, audio, images, and it will generate the outputs in the same way. It can also respond to audio a lot quicker, basically creating like a human conversation. Now, one of the things that's quite interesting about this is you can conversate in different languages, right? So for example, you could basically have your own like Chinese teacher inside ChatGPT. It could correct you. You could have a conversation with it. You could learn different phrases. I've not really seen anyone talk about that, but it could be an interesting one. And also, if you're using the API, if any of you are building your own tools with AI, you can see that now it's going to be faster and 50% cheaper with the API. Now, it's not like the biggest update in the world. Obviously, ChatGPT 5 hasn't come out just yet, but it's pretty crazy to see that ChatGPT 4.0 is going to be free. It's going to give everyone access to ChatGPT4. You can have real live conversations directly inside the app. You can interrupt it. You don't have to wait for it to buffer, etc. And it's 50% cheap, right? Now, what I can also imagine is that a lot of people were building AI tools inside ChatGPT, and those have actually been wiped out by this update. So, for example, you can imagine there's probably a few translation apps out there that were working with the OpenAI API. But you can pretty much do that within the app anyway, so you don't need to pay for a new tool. So if we go and get started right here inside the playground, this is where you can use API. And you can see right here that we have all the different models. And one of the main ones is GPT-4.0. It's cheaper, it's faster. I can imagine even more content is going to come onto the internet created with AI. And they've shown some examples of how you can use 4.0. So for example, including some examples of how the model performs in terms of text, audio, audio translation, vision, etc. These measurements that can be a little bit biased, right? Obviously every chart that you see like this is going to be measured differently. Some people are going to be more biased, etc. For example, if Llama releases new case study, they're probably going to favor their own tool over most. If Gemini releases one, potentially they're going to favor Gemini in terms of the way they test the model. So take it with a pinch of salt. But you can see how GPT is right at the top of most of these charts right here. As you can see, it's a bars in pink. Seems to have improved as well with language tokenization. But yeah, pretty crazy times there. Big update for ChatGPT. It's not like ChatGPT5 has come out, like I said. But what does it mean for SEOs? So number one, with the API, you're going to get faster, cheaper, and better content. Like I've shown before, the content side by side versus ChatGPT4 and ChatGPT3.5 isn't as good as ChatGPT 4.0. Additionally, you're going to get better performance in new languages, right? So for example, you can see by the tokenization updates, by the translation updates, etc., inside the app, that this is more tailored towards new languages, which means if you're launching new sites in different languages, the output is probably going to be even better. It's going to be even easier to build your own AI SEO tools. And I believe, for example, I've built a bunch of custom GPTs right here. I believe that with the new update, as far as I'm aware, people get free access to the GPT store, even if they're not a premium subscriber of ChatGPT. So you can see right here on the website where they've said introducing GPT 4.0. If we scroll down right here, you can see when using GPT 4.0, ChatGPT free users will now have access to features such as GPT 4 level intelligence, I think you will also get access to Code Interpreter, which is a pretty useful tool. And the main thing I think for a lot of people watching is being able to use GPTs inside the GPT store for free, right? That is a massive upgrade. So a lot of you, if you want to get access to all of these tools that I've created right here, you can get access for free with GPT 4.0. 
and you don't need to pay for a premium subscription. Which means not only do you get free access to GPTs, I believe, as far as I'm aware, you'll be able to create your own GPTs as well. Pretty crazy. Now, the other thing, you know, for me personally as an SEO agency is that if I have a team of 50 people, it'd be very expensive to give them all chat GPT subscriptions. With GPT-40, everyone gets access to a better version of AI for free. I can give them all my tools for free and they can build their own tools and systems and workflows as well. So it kind of empowers your team. So this is a big upgrade. Most people don't realize, but you can see there's one, two, three, four, five, six big benefits to SEOs that could actually change the game for you. So thanks so much for watching. If you want to get free access to my custom GPTs, link is inside the free SEO course. If you want to book in a free SEO strategy session where you can get your free SEO domination plan, we'll answer any questions you have, and you'll discover the best link building strategies for your website directly on the call. Feel free to book that in. And if you want to see more experiments with GPT-40 and AI SEO, feel free to join the SEO boardroom. You can see we've got nine five-star reviews right here. Prices go up every 10 members, so make sure you lock in your price right now. You get access to a bunch of free stuff, and also you can join a, a network of ambitious SEO pros where we can just share what we learn, showcase experiments, and help each other grow. Thanks so much for watching. Appreciate it as always. Bye-bye.